All right, good morning, everyone. It's Friday, we made it, and we're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. Jim, let's begin with uh, North Korea, another missile over Japan. Yeah, I, I, no one really knows how to uh, factor this in anymore. I mean, we know that if the uh, missile had fallen short and landed in Japan, I think you would have had World War III. I mean, I do think that the world is coalescing against China about this. Remember, China exports a great deal. If the Europeans were to come out and say something strong, 25% of, uh, of, of China stuff goes to Europe, then I think China would finally feel pressured. Right now, China's strongly on the side of North Korea, as they have been since North Korea was created. Now, North Korea aside, as you said on that incredible AAP call yesterday, this is an environment, Jim, that you've always kind of wanted. Yeah, I mean, I think that people, you got to think a little long term. I mean, I've been, uh, I bought my first stock in 1979, and what you have to recognize is that if you have an environment with low inflation and decent growth, uh, where interest rates are not that competitive, you're going to have a good stock market. And I think that it bothers people tremendously that the market can keep going up even though there's bad news. But you have to understand that is actually your backdrop. And when your backdrop is like that and you have a history of success with this kind of environment, it becomes harder to take the market down. And now the market can go down because suddenly you can have stocks down three, five. You know, look, we had a negative comment today about the airlines. They're down badly. But right. So the question is, do you use that weakness to buy? I did a piece yesterday about how Eli Lilly, uh, that J&J, &J, that someone would upgrade and start talking about some of these uh, of the drug stocks. And boom, it, it, it's happened. Jeffries came out today. So it's an environment where analysts are uh, excited to come out and recommend stocks, or upgrade to sell Gina. Uh, uh, it's Paz and Palm, it's Bristol Myers. I mean, so when stocks start moving, the analysts get behind them. And on our, our conference call yesterday, I talked about that you know, that same thing. By the way, Nucor, once again, cutting numbers. I'm sticking with Nucor just so people know. Uh, you mentioned the airline downgrades, but Action Alerts Plus holding Southwest was actually upgraded. Yeah, I mean, what happens is is that when you get uh, when you decide not to own the cyclical airline, you go for the secular growth airline. And that airline is Southwest Air or Love, which is one of the reasons why we own it. Uh, another analyst commentary to follow, Carnival and Credit Suisse. That was a very tough piece. I mean, it was a, a piece that I did not see coming uh, because uh, a lot of their business is in the Caribbean. But the one thing I would count on is if these stocks go down, they will clean up the Caribbean. It'll, there are also islands that they will go to and, and that have not been gone to before. And I'm saying this because um, when you have a, a CEOs like Fain and Donald, uh, Royal Caribbean, what you find are people who are very resourceful and they have been counted out before. Don't count they were counted out by Zika. They were count Carnival was counted out by uh, an unfortunate, terrible incident off of Italy. Uh, and uh, the Ebola, Ebola counted right. them out. And I will just say over and over again, they reinvent themselves. So I do not want you to go against them. But today's a weirdly big cap rally. I mean, we're seeing a lot of the big caps uh, go higher. And I think a lot of that is that the big caps are actually tied bizarrely to Apple. And Apple seems to have finally shaken off the idiots, morons, and chowderheads who bought the stock between 160 and 163, expecting buyers to come in and take them out, and it didn't happen. Well, Jim, that's why you say, own Apple, don't trade yeah, it. Yeah, and, and I did say yesterday in the call, listen, you, know, you could probably buy some. I, I, it, my philosophy is, uh, is strictly that maybe people trade too much and that some stocks are not worth trading. Hmm. Now, Jim, when we talk about the broader economy, the consumer, you highlighted uh, Eton on Squawk on e the Street, Eaton. Uh, this yeah, in Eaton. industrial um, renaissance. Yeah, ETN. Uh, this was a conference call, a conference yesterday, Morgan Stanley, where they talked about the demand from uh, Europe and demand from China uh, really growing. U.S. not as good, which is one of my themes, is that Europe is stronger. Uh, Eaton got into Europe. Unfortunately, they really put a lot of assets in at the top, and it's hurt them for a long time. It's no longer hurting them. It's really helping them. Uh, and Eaton is a classic industrial that's having a really, really good quarter. And the conference really shows you exactly how strong things are. I thought it was very good. All right, we'll watch that one. Meanwhile, Senator Warren launching a probe into Equifax. No surprise here. No, I mean, Equifax is a disaster. And the fact is, is that the board of directors should uh, look long and hard at their CEO. Uh, and I, I think it's shameful. This is a company that has uh, far more data on all of us, on m m many Americans, than any other company. It's, it's the ultimate hack. Hmm. And uh, when you're the ultimate hack, should you not be the ultimate protected? 
protected by uh, uh, by Cisco, uh, protected by Palo Alto, protected by Proofpoint, protected by CyberArk, uh, protected by all of these great companies, most importantly Citrix, which used to be, just so we know, that headed by one of the board members. Now, isn't that something? A CEO, former CEO of Citrix on the board. How could that person continue to allow the CEO to stay CEO? I mean, this guy's going to get grilled by Warren. And you go on YouTube, her, her videos go viral. Well, Senator Warren, um, I mean, you know, she was uh, very hard on Wells Fargo as a rogue institution. She's going to be very hard on Equifax. And I think it's incumbent upon that company to fire the CEO. I, I don't think that's anything that's radical. I think that if this happened under uh, 317 million other Americans, watch, they'd be fired. A lot of interest this morning in ride-sharing companies. Alphabet may be investing in Lyft. SoftBank may be investing in Uber. What did you think? Well, I, I think that uh, that Uber is, is the uh, enemy of, of Alphabet. Uh, remember, they feel like that Waymo, uh, some of the... Um, of the intellectual property was stolen, yes. so it's uh, natural that they're going to fund the opposition. Naturally, they're going to fund them. Do these investments perhaps signal more reason for them to stay private? Well, I know we had that blue bottle uh, quote in, uh, a, from Nestle uh, when Nestle bought a stake of them, saying it's just it's living hell basically to be pub to be private, I'd uh, be public, and it's worth staying private. I don't know. I'm. I do think that everybody deserves some liquidity who's in it. Maybe this is a liquidity event. Some of the people got in earlier, like a TPG, might be able to get out uh, in Uber. I don't know. I mean, these are, remember, private companies. We don't really know what's going on inside. Right, we don't know. Meanwhile, Oracle reported better than expected earnings, but guidance was light. Well, I mean, Eric Johnson has a remarkable piece on Oracle that really explains exactly what happened. He was mentioning that 70, 70 times they talked about the cloud in the previous quarter. So therefore what happened is, is that when clouds uh, did not accelerate again, everyone got a little spoiled and therefore people got disappointed. Uh, I think that the people at Oracle, uh, ha it wasn't their fault. I mean, Oracle did not necessarily lead us down the Primrose path. The analysts did, and they tried very hard actually to raise numbers and say good things. But the fact is, is that as Johnson points out, there was not a surprise coming from uh, the cloud. The surprise came from other parts of the business. Is Mark Benioff smiling right now? Well, Mark did tweet. <laughs> you just go look at his tweets. Okay. Meanwhile, Nvidia, what an incredible price target raise at Evercore. Yeah, I mean, they went to the what mid 250s at uh, 250 uh, from where it is now. I think what Evercore truly recognized is that. Uh, NVIDIA has been kept down in large part because people use their cards for crypto mining of Bitcoin. And with the Chinese cracking down on Bitcoin, that meant that a portion of the 10% that, uh, that is the sales of NVIDIA that is used for mining would slow. But what Evercore pointed out is this is really an artificial intelligence story. It's really very much a story about graphical user interface and great gaming chips. Go look at what Take-Two did. Take-Two mm -hmm. really was waiting for it to some degree. They wanted to have the perfect game for the new NVIDIA chips. And we talked a lot about NVIDIA on yesterday's conference call, telling people they should buy it. And I think that that is a way to be able to go back on our conference call and look what we said about NVIDIA, read Johnson's article, and I think you'll get the whole story. All right, now Jim, what happens if NVIDIA breaks $174 a share? No, it already has. Well, you were going to post more pictures of your well, dog. I did, yeah. It's a, it's more pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we love when you post yeah, pictures you, of your dog. You. Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Okay. Thank you so much thank as you. always. For more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.